Hello, and uh, welcome to an episode, or probably the first episode, uh, maybe not the last episode, of uh, a night of fireside chats with the Roll Wise folks. Uh, if you happen to catch this live, uh, great. If you happen to catch this as a recording, also great. Uh, stop by in the comments, say hi, do all those kind of things. Uh, and of course, if you like these kind of chats, let us know, uh, because we might, whatever, season them between uh, our actual plays and everything else that we do on Monday nights. So yeah, so since this is kind of unscripted, like the rest of our show. <laughs> I was going to say, like the other parts are scripted. 99.9% .9 of our show is is un, is unscripted, except for the, the fact that we have a title that we say all the time, right? And that's really, that's scripted. Roll and that's more of a habit, really. Uh, that's true. It's that's true. true. Uh, it looks like we're working. Everybody's oh, working. yay. So uh, we've still managed to make sure that the gremlins haven't eaten all of our... We can still project, project sound out of our face holes at yep. people. That's good. And, and right into the internet, which is the best place for it, honestly. You know, if I'm going to put my sound anywhere, I'm going to put it on the internet. Um, so speaking of which, AI in the internet. I heard heard this story the other day. Did you guys hear that uh, apparently pe what people are doing is that they're taking folks like us, not necessarily well-known individuals, and they're using our likeness, and they're making AI commercials out of it to give the everyday... <laughs> what? <laughs> really? So... Yeah, yeah, and I don't know if I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it, like for a while there, I probably saw like a few advertisements or whatever it was that had like Dr. Phil, um, you know, like a few other really famous people. But you could tell that they were fake AI advertisements because their mouth was moving in like this really weird, like amorphous. Wow. It, was, it was like a it was like an alien was trying to convince <clears throat> us to to take this diet pill or something like that. Well, the good thing about me is everyone knows somebody that looks like me. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, it just happens to be me. So, uh, yeah. So there's so, probably uh, already AI commercials with somebody that looks kind of like me. So yeah. there may be. And the funny thing about this AI stuff is, since they grab people that don't really aren't or that aren't really well known, you wouldn't know it unless you saw it somehow. Like you know that your name, image, and likeness was used right. It's yeah. It's not like they're using a celebrity that. Mm -hmm. That so many people team. out of a hundred could actually recognize. Yeah, I th I thought it was kind of funny because I was like, oh man, could I? Because obviously we have a um, you know, we have audio, we have video. I mean, people could take us yeah. and they could put us in the well, machine they and they could spit could. out. Yeah, they could definitely deep fake our voices and images pretty easy. There, there are the, definitely would... people that I have worked with in the past and probably even gone to high school with that wouldn't recognize me if they saw a video with me. So. Well, that, that's a different story though, Jeff. But imagine <laughs> imagine their reaction if you got hit up on Facebook after you were done. Hey, you have good job landing that commercial. What commercial? <laughs> yeah, what commercial? Uh, well, the good thing about in my life and the stories that I've been, I, I know about my life, most people would be like, man, good thing Phil got that commercial. So yeah. Phil? Yeah, haven't I ever told, haven't I ever told you that story? Personal story about Brent. Uh, when I was, I think I was still in high school in like uh, early 20s or late teens. Uh, me and another friend of mine were at the mall at the time because we still had one where we are. But uh, these these group of people come up and go, hey, are you Phil? And I go, no. And they go, are you sure? <laughs> and I was like, know. yes, I'm sure I'm not Phil. <laughs> you're just saying that, right? It's like, come yeah, on, dog. Exactly. I know you're that guy. Like, Why are you pretending you? not to be Phil? Yeah, and it happens a lot, actually. People come up to me and ask me if I'm somebody else. Uh, so, you know, okay. no one will ever know. So it's me. So That's hilarious. I have to say that, you know, in terms of like, it, in terms of like name, you know, people get your names wrong and everything like that. Since all of us have worked in call center life, you know, I, I know when I was going on there and I was like, hey, my name is Mike. And they'd be like, okay, Fred. I was like, who's Fred? <laughs> Rus Rusty was my favorite. Uh, well, there's still a guy, there was a guy when we all worked at the same call center, there was a guy that everybody thought was me and everybody thought was him. And somebody the other day walked by me and said, oh, hey, that other guy's name that I don't remember. I was like, oh, God. And you were like, what is happening here? I was like, <laughs> it's not me, but fine, whatever. I don't care. Uh, I'll never see yeah. you again, probably. But yeah, so yeah, it still happens. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's the, that's the name of the game. Don't, uh, don't. Don't get on the internet because then apparently you'll be harvested for 
personal data, like your voice and your face, and they'd be hucking all kinds oh. of goods. Gosh. Yeah, I, I guess it's, I mean, I guess it's unsurprising. I just, I hadn't heard that that was happening. It's kind yeah. of wild. Well, a I mean, I wouldn't say AI that I'm plugged things. in, but I, I do like the AI content, you know, that the talk that's been happening around it, you know, the dangers of AI and how eventually it'll lead to our societal collapse or how it's so dumb that you don't have to worry about your job for another X number of years. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just feels like the two camps are very at odds with each other's perception of reality. So I like bouncing back and forth. The thing I like about the discussion I like about AI so far has been, I really was hoping AI wouldn't take over art and writing so I had more time to do my dishes and clean my house. I was really hoping AI would be cleaning my house and doing my dishes. And I could write and do art. <laughs> yeah. You could be the one doing the, the creative endeavors instead. You're like, and, and said now it's like, oh, well, I'd like the AI to do my dishes. And it's like, get to work. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, TP says, go over to the counter. Start doing dishes. <laughs> I, oh, I have made the... a schedule for you, Brent. It includes <laughs> doing dishes first thing in the morning. Yeah, chat GPT, do my dishes. It was like that quote I sent you guys about the guy who was like, yeah, the AI AI has finally convinced me that there might be a human soul. Now that I've seen AI generated soulless art. Yeah, art with I, real, I realized that I realize that actual art does have a soul and it makes me start to question some of my beliefs. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's weird when you look at some of that stuff. And it's it's also weird when you, you know, I mean, even recently we were talking about that D and D, you know, they were like, Oh, we don't want to do any any art or anything like that. And then they were like, Oh, but we're gonna do a lot of mining for AI. <laughs> yeah. Like, talk about a one eighty, but then they one eighty their one eighty. It is so strange. Like well, they, I don't know. They did what corporations do. They mm -hmm. took back a public stance, right? I yeah. mean, corporations are full of this. This is who we are. And it's this bright side that cares about people when that's not really what they do. That's what they say they are. Yeah. But then you look at their actual actions and they're way different and they're way darker and they're more 100 percent profit driven almost. Yeah. Um, you, you know, it's. We don't talk about the real things. Uh, we talk they, about the fake things that make they, people feel good. They say a lot of things with their outside voice that they shouldn't, though. They do, and it's amazing that it's amazing that somebody making. I, I have no idea what the what the CEO of Hasbro makes, but my guess is is it's in the seven figures with bonuses. Okay, my, conservatively, and it's it's hard to believe that that guy is that stupid in public. Yeah, whoever their per, per PR person is just terrible, I think. But what was the new thing that Chris Cost said? D&D uh, &D could use less classes. Did you no, know I think that was that? the designer, like like base classes in the in the base game. I think yeah. I kind of agree with it, actually. I, uh, I mean, probably, but like, God, you're going to piss a bunch of people off if you start cutting classes out of the D&D. Like, you can't really go back now. Well, I mean, I, I think so. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. I was just saying, like, but you think so? I, I mean, like, I, I wonder, because I don't know, maybe maybe I'm one of those people that I would be curious how many systems do classless RPGs well. You know, because uh, I was, well, well, yeah, but those are different D &D systems. D&D is not a classless. <laughs> that's, I, that's what I'm saying. It's, no, yeah, it's just, those are different systems, though. The minute somebody's like, yeah, well, we cut, the minute somebody's like, yeah, we cut druids out of D&D. &D. Well, but what are, what are they oh, up to, they eight, miss it? 18? Oh, people would. People would be is pissed. It? Is it is it eighteen base classes now? No, I don't think so. I don't. I mean, let's see D and D and D Beyond. What do you have to say for yourself? Yeah, go take take a look. It's I think it's at least twelve. But like, if you're a new player, do you really need that many choices? Because well, an advanced player isn't playing just a base class; they're playing a subclass. There's twelve. Is there? Yeah, twelve. Yeah, I don't. I and then those are each broken up into you know the sub the the yeah. subclasses. So. But well, yeah, I mean, I probably you agree. got hybrid I, shit where you can, I, you know, level I, up in this and then that and then the other. Thing. Well, I mean, I probably agree. I just don't think D and D's you can do that with D and D now. It's a like the D and D classes are like a a thing. They're like, well, I, yeah. I don't have the numbers of what I don't remember what what people play, but apparently, like 
you could cut Druid and offend less than three percent of the or something like that of the uh, total population I think that plays. The I'm game. telling you, if you cut a class <laughs> now out of D D, the outrage would be um, enormous, even by people that hated the class. You think so? But I mean, I guess I there's know, that probably vocal minority. Be. I mean, that's what they would run into. Is that they would just? I mean, in a, in a in a situation where they don't seem to want to make anybody mad about their game. You but know, I mean, I, people like people like options, and when you you say, "Well, we have twelve options that people can play," and mm-hmm. it's like that we always talked about. Like you always give them less to start with, and then later you can add something. Because the minute you're like, "Hey, we have these twelve things," oh, we decided those twelve things aren't good for you. We're going to take away six of them, and now yeah. people are like, "But I have la- six. I have I have six less things," and you're like, "But you didn't." Yeah. You didn't you didn't do anything with the other things and they're like but I can't have those six less things anymore. Yeah. No you're you're <laughs> right about that. The reaction at at this point like if you were doing a new version you could probably start with fewer. Or Maybe. a different game, I think a that, game from scratch you could start Exactly. With fewer. Uh but, the reason that Pathfinder could do it is because Pathfinder's not TNT and they right. they've been malleable with their ba- their base character classes but like they're iconic in D&D now. You can't just be like no, it, hey. it would be it would be hard. It would be it, the it would outrage. Be the outrage would be. Well, do you, you guys want to see the breakdown from 2023 from D and D Beyond? Just to remind oh, yourself. No, not this horrible chart where it's <laughs> hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, twenty thousand, twenty. No, oh my god! So Whoever just to, just in case anybody forgot, shot. there was the. Um, <laughs> There was the 2023 unrolled, and so then they they did put this out there that co- kind of showed the discrepancies. Where uh, obviously, I guess it's doing. Artificer that really nobody gives a f about. But Artificer uh, isn't a base class; like it isn't in the base book, at least, is it? Oh, okay. I don't think it was. Uh, no, but it also it, there's that, and also it doesn't work very well. Most I don't think they feel, I don't think class works very well you, in most people's general opinion. Do you think that your Do you think that your average new player knows the difference between a wizard, a warlock, and a sorcerer? Yeah, a new player, no, no. But, but it, after two weeks, yes. <laughs> well, especially especially when they're just like, okay, if you want to be the baddest class class in the game. And you want to catch Eldritch Blast a lot, especially if they're playing with a sorcerer or, uh, or a warlock. Or a war- and if they're, they're playing like, with a warlock, they're like, the, "Why does it seem like I suck?" Yeah, like, and the wizard's like, is, "Your class is unbeatable once you get to level twelve. Yeah. What level are we at now? One. When will we get to level twelve? Don't In worry about it. You'll never years. get there. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry about it. You'll never get there. Well, I mean, honestly, you know, I mean, you could start off at level nine now. You know, with the uh, the whole no, you um, you could I and I I think I'm I think Brent's winning me over I I think I really think that the minimum level to start a D and D campaign should probably be three, and maybe even be level five. I you will, just shouldn't play D and D at level will, one or two at all. I will unless you have new unless you like really new people and they need to learn like the basics of the game. I can see starting at level one, but anybody who's played level uh who's played D and D before, you should definitely start at three because you're just it, not playing it, your character. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing a, a beginning adventurer, a beginning generic adventurer. Maybe that's what they need. Is you, you everybody starts off as 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 a blank slate character for like three levels, and then at the third level, you actually get to pick your stuff and get like eight cool things all at once, and all of a sudden, you you feel this immense level of power. I think they they had something. I thought in because I I remember doing that in in like. Um, in the most recent, like, like, I think uh, World of Warcraft had something like that where you'd feel like you could gain your skills as you went along, but at an advanced rate. But it's like, I think that if you look at, is, Brent, isn't Dungeon Crawl Classics have like a funnel that you basically become the cool character and like the rest of them just die or something like that? Or is that, is that yeah, something? Dungeon Crawl Classic has the, the, pe- yeah, the peasant funnel where you're, you make like <laughs> 10 level zero characters and just, funnel them into a meat grinder. To hey, Mike, are you box. purposely showing us stuff in your inbox? I don't know if you want to share no, that on the internet. That's fine. No, it's not on the internet. It's uh, I stopped sharing. Oh, um, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was trying to sign into D&D Beyond because they do have a um, they do have a uh, what you call it? The lost thing of Soge Camp. It looks like it's actually out now. So, I, I so guess your you interesting little uh, sign into claim. Uh, are you going to you going to claim it? Yeah, I guess. 
So, um, so interesting. Your little blog post. I was just look, looking it over uh, mm -hmm. about the comparisons uh, from DM David. Is that the guy that did it? Who is? The, what's the website? Yeah, I think I think that's DM David. The DMDavid.com. Yeah. But oh. so interesting. Interestingly, um, the no missing attacks thing. Mm -hmm. uh, did you read that part? That's pretty interesting. Yeah. No. So, uh, do you want me to bring that up so people can see that after we do this? Sure. Okay. So um, uh, let's go to this. So as we were, as we look around the internet and everything like that, um, just to give a little background, uh, through Reddit, somebody had posted this uh, blog. Um, this is for DM David, who seems to have put together a uh, rather well thought out written um, article about the comparison between Daggerheart, MCDM, RPG, and D&D, &D, um, the current version of D&D. &D. I don't think they, I don't think they were talking about the, the proposed D&D, &D, you know, the one D&D &D to rule them all kind of thing. I don't think um, anybody knows what that D&D &D looks like. So, well, I mean, they, they kind of have an idea from the play test, I would suppose, because that would be a shot in the... Yeah, but it looks it looks the same as regular D D. So if you're going by that, yeah, I mean I don't know, um, but yeah, this is the section you're talking about right here, right? Mm -hmm. The MCDM tries to eliminate the down moments when a player misses an attack and wastes their turn. All ability rolls succeed. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. I don't know what I did there. Technology. Uh, uh, okay, all ability rolls succeed with an outcome that determines the degree of success and sets the amount of damage. Without damage rolls, the system plays faster. No one likes to lose a turn to miss. But in play, I found that the lack of failure in attack rolls made combat feel less compelling. The reason comes down to something called something psychologists call intermittent reinforcement, where behavior like rolling attacks earn inconsistent and unpredictable rewards. Intermittent reinforcement built the casinos along Las Vegas Strip, and it's why no one would play a slot machine that returns exactly 97 cents every time you drop a dollar. To be fair, the version of MCDM RPG I played used a different combat mechanic where the players just roll damage. So even the biggest roll in a formula like 2d6 plus 6 yielded just five more points than average. Uh, the new mechanic allows bigger uh, bigger results for big rolls and undoubtedly plays better. Yeah, um, this is interesting because I, I, always, I, I always forget that fact that like the human brain uh, hungers for spikes. Like it likes that big jump that... It doesn't like mediocrity. It likes that that it either likes a down moment or an up moment because then it floods your brain with endorphins. And that's basically what it's talking about is like those big moments, Matt, will feel more important because they they <laughs> load your brain with chemicals. So like evening that out might make combats feel less interesting, which is kind of an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, it is a, I don't know, it's, it is one of those things where, you know, the feel bad moment from the missing and everything like that. I mean, there's probably people on both sides of that because obviously we missed a lot in Daggerheart, but I don't feel like it took away from the game. It, what took away more from the game was the fact that you had one player that was seemingly more capable in the situation than the other player. And there, that's where the power of it, this balance. Yeah, I hit a lot. I just didn't. Yeah, I just didn't do as much but if but i think i think what they're talking about though is like if you hit every if you just hit over every combat is like that mm -hmm. i think it would just get repetitive in a way that might make it eventually not feel important yeah it, well if you hit and every time you hit for the average like let's say your damage average is five points and so you just automatically every turn we don't need to roll any dice you literally just do five yeah. damage to the enemy like i can see that taking you out of it but i i I understand the dopamine spike. I understand the reward, right? The intermittent reinforcement, I think. But, but man, but I mean, wouldn't that wouldn't when that you have just a whole party of people damage? just missing and missing and missing and moving and trying to do things strategically and having this power that I can only use once a day, like that is true. And I think, fourth edition, and then miss. Like, and I think that's what this feedback is talking about: is moving the mechanics to where the the problem he was suggesting is is that the spikes weren't big enough on damage. Like okay, they were just, that could be. That like could he be could sure. almost, you could almost like, you just do five more points of damage. You could almost just say, okay, you hit, you do the average, <laughs> you do average damage. Okay. You hit, you do average damage. Like you'd almost remove all of that rolling at that point. But okay. so it sounds like what they did is they added a mechanic that makes the, the, the variation between damage spikes higher, which I think is probably going to be more important for the game. Yeah. 
Well, and I think that, you know, I think that that's always kind of nice when you have those big, big moments and everything like that, when you can create those in the game. Because I, I think the one thing that at least I've seen in, in the actual plays that I've watched and people like roll, you know, when somebody scores that 20, you know, that critical success, um, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're celebrating, right? There's like that, oh, I just scored sure. a touchdown. You know, like they want to spike the football kind of thing, regardless of how much, you know, that damage they actually do in the grand scheme of things. But I mean, those are like really good feel good moments. And even if we roll a one and that critical success and uh, critical failure is what your outcome is, you still have a, a memorable moment, especially if there's a lot that built up to that dice roll. Um, I mean, I, one of the things I really like watching when I'm going through clips is if I'm lucky, I get some really good uh, Brennan Lee Mulligan clips from Dimension 20, where, you know, he brings out the tower of doom or whatever it's called and you know they you need it you need a 19 or 20 or else uh you die <laughs> you know and they uh yeah. they roll the dice and it's just like oh they got it um you know whether or not that's real i don't know I, you never believe anything you see on tv right it's also interesting that they talk about how people love advantage and disadvantage in this article mm -hmm. do they and, i uh, mean i thought it was okay I hate it. oh <laughs> Where, where, what does he have to say on it, Mike? Can you, you scroll, can scroll down? down. <clears throat> uh, they just like that it takes out all the fiddly, like fiddly uh, math that you have to do. Mm -hmm. But like, there is nothing in the world that feels worse than like bartering or jockeying for that advantage and then rolling both dice as failures. Like, uh, I rolled a one. Uh, I rolled a one again. Even in Daggerheart, that sucked. Well, I think I think any time you re-roll and get. Like, cause, cause Daggerheart, you rolled the same damage. Like, I think Brent, you rolled the same damage once, and Jeff, you rolled the same damage once. Where you, I you think I rolled the same the damage twice. I think I did one once and two 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 ones. Yeah, but... exactly. Yeah, I mean that's just it's just a feel bad thing because you spent something and it didn't do anything. <laughs> Whereas I that's think true. with uh, the last time I I think we looked with like uh, luck on the tales of the valiant. I kind of liked how that system was being proposed because you kind of stored up extra rolls, and that's you know, extra D4 or whatever it was. Is that what it ended up being? No, I don't know. We'll have to, I guess we'll have to pick it up and find out. Uh, but I did, I do like that mechanic where rather than just re-rolling, you give yourself a bonus in some way to your existing role to know if you can push it over the edge or do something greater. Um, I think I appreciate that a little bit more. Than well, that. and that's, and, and the reason people don't like it on a D20 is like, that's hard. That's really hard. Like, your plus five, if you roll a six, isn't going to matter as much as mm -hmm. uh, on 2d12, where you're averaging, like, I think a 10. Um, so that plus four, whatever, is going to be more than... It's going to matter more. Like, your your plus sure. two is going to matter more, because you're going to be closer to whatever target number it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And I and I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think I thought the advantage thing was kind of nice, because it... You know, usually, I mean, it usually didn't backfire in your face, but not to say that rent rolling with advantage was never above a three. But and I think advantage it wasn't it was advantage really like we could re-roll, but it wasn't advantage in like a, an extra d six or something actually. Yeah, in Daggerheart, advantage was an extra yeah. d six. It's just you guys tended to have. I think you guys each had an ability where you could re-roll your damage roll. And yeah, you got like. Like Brent, I think your ability as Garrick was that you rerolled ones and twos, but had to accept the second result. And Correct. Jeff had yep. the ability to spend stress and reroll damage. I think um, it was stress. Yeah. Yeah. You could reroll sure. all your Correct. damage dice and you still rolled a one or a two. And so that, I mean, that, that was at least, that felt even worse because then you had actually consumed it. Well, it, it feels bad. And it's, I'm not saying that it's not okay to feel bad, mm -hmm. you know, with all of this stuff. I, you should have highs and lows. It's when you feel, when I feel bored and I start checking out of the game. Um, and I have done that in with D and D at times, especially in longer, more complex D and D combats where it just feels like I'm knocking down a brick wall with a bag full of marshmallows. It's, yeah. It just goes on and on and on and on. It's, yeah. it's awful sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's just hideous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, give me a quick resolution. Kill me or let me kill the monster much quicker and I will be happier. Yeah. You know, it's, know. it's like the psychology of customer service uh, stuff. You know, if you get somebody a resolution in a short period of time, I think in less than five minutes or less than 10 minutes, 
they are happier after the fact than if it takes an hour to get them a resolution, even if it's the original resolution or better that they wanted. Mm -hmm. They're angrier at the time that it took. And some of the combat systems, I am not there to simulate absolutely every time a sword goes through the air. I'm, I'm just not. I'm not looking for a historically accurate combat because, frankly, it's boring. Yeah. Well, I in mean, my, in my mind, I, I think that in some ways, I mean, don't don't you agree that maybe sometimes the lethality behind it is what can make it exciting? Because I think yeah. I think that's the one part that, you know, kind of turned me off from the, the higher level D&D anyways, is because then you had I mean, multiple hit points, multiple all that kind of stuff. And it felt like you just it wasn't necessarily take you weren't losing hit points to die you were getting other effects to die um that was the yes. most dangerous thing that you had to worry about whereas if you take some of these other games which have higher quote unquote lethality a little bit grimmer in that regard then then there's a certain element that well the dm doesn't have to go after me for me to have a lethal blow dealt but i can right. be hit and in, in daggerheart apparently you could be hit twice and then be you know on yeah. death's door you know, if the if the rolls are good and you don't have armor to spare kind of thing, which no, I thought you're, was crazy. You're right. It was... It, I think it keeps you engaged. Having something yeah. at Jeopardy keeps you engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feeling, well, feeling, feeling like I'm not too. in Jeopardy and this thing going on for 45 minutes while I'm literally killing mooks, you know, uh, you know, uh, minions, whatever you want to call them, you know, isn't yeah. fun. So what is the... Uh, you can kill these guys with one hit. Well, I actually have to hit them. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to just, um, like, I don't know, just rolling dice where it starts to feel like no reason after a while. I think that just gets... Yeah. It's, it just gets boring after a I, while. I did like yeah. DM David's comments. I, you know, I, I will probably... It's a good article. More of his stuff. Yeah, it's really I, good. Yeah, it, it, it gives us something to talk about and something to think about. Yeah, Especially think... with... Two people, you know, gunning after some of the D and D audience. Yeah, and it's well, cool that, and uh, it's nice for me because I wasn't crazy in my feeling about the character that I was playing. Like he confirmed a similar feeling. Yeah, well, he probably picked it up. You know, it's ironic because he probably picked it up with a similar mindset to you, then found that the way I'm going to get to do this was and a little it's like, bit. I'm not doing abstract. anything like I thought I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I and like I said, when I started looking at the character sheet, I, I felt like the battle mastery was like, oh, I should be using this more often. I just can't determine how I just, like there's just no basis for determining how effective it was. Um, like mm -hmm. our arguments after that we can't or our discussion afterward for like arguments of what the ability does made sense, but like in the moment, without any sort of like example they need to provide some more guidance. Yeah, on on if they're gonna have special abilities like that, where basically it's like where they're the the outcome is narratively, tactically and narratively beneficial. Like they're gonna have to have examples of what like that looks like. Yeah, because well, you'd have been shooting mean, in for a single like takedown every time, right, Brent? I don't know. One d eight still seems pretty weak damage wise. I don't think it seems that worse than one d eight plus one. It, it's worse. Um. It's worse, <laughs> but and, and and with the idea that I didn't know it would be doing other stuff. Sure, it, it just did feel worse. Well, yeah, no, no, it costs, hope. it costs hope too. Is it so? It, it costs hope, and it doesn't say yes. And you can grant the target disadvantage, or you can grant the target. You know, you can make them vulnerable. Yeah, or you can pull their pants down and laugh at them, or like I, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. without spelling out what's good about doing this. Yeah, it's an empower it, ability. It, with yeah, no, it, it feels like it needs to. Which that seems which, to be one of the places where they, it feels like they need yeah, to elaborate a bit. It, it seems like their idea is is they want to be like, here's an ability you can do anything you want with it, but like that can't that doesn't work as well because people don't like if the pile's too big, people just walk past it. Sure. So you have to spell out a little bit more to understand. Otherwise, you otherwise you you also risk the people just feeling like they're being meta players and being like, "Well, I'm taking myself out of the combat and deciding what this ability does from a meta from a meta advantageous standpoint of what I think instead of sure. what the ability should do." Well, and and I mean it. It, it was, the weird part about it to me for was literally the fact that you know if you have that type of ability, you're going to use it to try to create one of the three conditions that can be applied to the other people right like 
And I feel like in in those kind of things, because it's a it's a negotiation rather than an actual like, oh, I go up to the skeleton to trivet for vulnerability, but I do that every turn. Or like right. what and if even you if just oh, go ahead. But, but I mean it should say that. It should like you can uh, it doesn't say you can give mm -hmm. uh, you know different I don't what do they call status effects or yeah, status I don't know, effects or whatever. Or whatever. Conditions to people with these ab this ability, like it should say that, and then it allows you to get creative. But like otherwise, it just sounds like a worse attack. No, it it does kind of. I I, I get that. You trip them. Well, what does that do? Stuff <clears throat> makes them have to stand up. Okay, I'm vulnerable. <laughs> right, but 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 it should say that's what I'm saying. Is it should say that it should give you an idea. Yeah, there should at least be an idea of what. <clears throat> It can make them. I, I don't know. Yeah. Or the GM messed up and not saying, well, if you knock them down with a trip, they're vulnerable. Oh yeah, yeah, let's blame let's blame the GM. <laughs> let's do that. Hey, GM failure. <laughs> you gotta give back some fear balls, sir. I spend all my fear. I spend all my fear. Yeah. So it, it's it's just interesting because I'm actually curious because I, I think I saw somewhere along the lines of you know, and just kind of keeping on that topic, but going in a different direction is that I, I'm just, I'm really wondering like what other games fall into that successor category for D and D because I mean, so like now we at least, I at least know three, four, right. So four games. So no, at least four, right. Tales of the Valiant. I have dagger heart MCDM RPG, which one of these days we're going to get a name. I hope, I hope it's like, way up here because that would be hilarious if it was more known as this forever now um and then we have dc20 is the other one that i'm aware of i pathfinder yeah you uh, can't Path, well, pathfinder. pathfinder but i don't i don't know if it i don't think it was spawned part per se from the whole ogl debacle whereas it feels like the other ones were at least in oh no it's a successor five. though it's a successor to D D though yeah so I guess it's, five. I mean, it's, it's five probably just branched a little it's earlier. Probably the, the it's probably the first successor, first true mm -hmm. successor to D and D, um, really. Yeah, but like other than those five, are there other ones out there? Right, like I mean, I mean Shadow Dark. With that, that I thought well, that was just really, a, it's really OSR, OSR game, though, right? Tried to, but I mean, but I mean, OSR is D and D. Like, well, that's, yeah, well, that's well, the yeah, part it's, that, it's that's not branching off of fifth. It's branching <laughs> off of. Earlier D and D, &D or yeah. you know, first, but, it, or... but it's essentially an alternative. That's what they're trying to. I mean, that's what their idea is. They even yeah. say they they even say they mix some uh, sure IV principles in with OSR principles. So modern gaming mechanics and stuff like that. yeah. So I mean, like those games are all D and D successors. I mean, really anything. I mean, really anything that takes place in a dungeon is probably somewhat of a of a like dungeon crawl classics is probably also kind of a DD successor or off branch yeah with, I with, just, your, with your peasant funnel i thought i i thought i saw a, somebody mention that there was a classless version that you know somebody was going to try to have a DD style game but be classless and as you said you know i know that kind of takes it a different direction but everyone's putting their own riff on it right now it's like which riff is, for is there a classless game? game that you've played there was there um there was a game in one of the posts that i made but i don't remember what it was Okay, because I, I in, in my head I'm thinking there somebody has to have made a classless game, but I don't think I've ever played a class. I'm sure that there's plenty of games without class. Um, yeah. I still haven't I'm, played one, but um, so, um it's, a, it's a joke. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, I'm surprised you didn't go. Well, Jeff, if it's classless, I'm surprised you're not <laughs> familiar with all of them. <laughs> That's unfortunately more I'm surprised you're not getting royalties at this point. <laughs> No, no. there's just plenty of games that uh, <laughs> don't have class. Uh, yeah. Some of those, those of which we we do not name. Yeah, so like there's Embark. I mean, just looking on itch. Um, okay. Embark is a classic, a classless game. Um, oh, download now for name your own price. Maybe maybe take a look at that. Uh, but I thought I just it doesn't sound like the game I was thinking of. Although I do appreciate the art. Uh, by Sea Lore, originally titled Classless Legends. It's a D20 really? based fantasy tabletop rule set where players build and develop legendary characters through skill usage. The rules are brief and clear, yet widely encompassing and open for creativity. Distance and other aspects of the game are abstracted to encourage play 
solely within the theater of the mind. There's lots of those, but they're not considered uh, D and D derivatives. Mm-hmm. Cause I think there's like, I think like rune quest or someone like that, something like that. Like there's games like that, older games that are, are, are like, they're not a class system. They're a skill system mm-hmm. is usually what it calls it, where it's like, you start with a character, pick the skills that you want. Yeah. And you kind of develop an archetype from that. Mm. Um, it's really, it's, it's pretty much, it's a different kind of, that's a pretty big, I think that's a pretty, that's, big a, branch that's a different D&D. genre. Yeah. That that's a pretty is. big branch from D and D because uh, it might be fantasy of some sort, but usually it's also a lower fantasy because yeah. the, the skills are more granular. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't have as much high fantasy elements. I don't think. Oh, I'd be curious. I mean, there's a pay what you want for this uh, embark. Maybe I'll pick it up and read it. Not that I mean, now that I have all this time since we're not running a game on Monday and uh, we're apparently running Monster of the Week on Wednesday. Um, gosh, I love Monster of the Week. It just there's so much to love about that game. Like, I don't, sorry to sorry to, to segue into a different game, but um, gosh, <laughs> I love that game so much. It is such a weird game, though, because from an improv standpoint, just the investigators being able to ask questions like, oh, what kind of monster is it? I have to come up on the spot if you guys have succeeded and actually tell you the truth. What is this crap? <laughs> it's a narrative game. That's why. It yeah. sounds like you succeeded your investigation and you get a hold on me. Huh. I get a hold of the truth. Uh, whatever. I don't know. It's just, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Yeah. I think Riddle of Steel is a, uh, a skill game. Riddle of Steel. Oh, yeah. Which oh, is an old, which is an older Conan sort of RPG. Oh, that was one thing I was going to say about our conversation. Uh, a, uh, I love Monster of the Week too. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean Fairly. to diverge from your diversion. But um, uh, I wanted. Over. I wanted to let you know. Uh, I think uh, one of our conversations last week we talked about aliens and if there was an alien RPG before. I don't believe there was a licensed alien RPG before uh, Free Leagues. I mean, there's a lot of like. <laughs> it's an alien game. Um, but it's kind of not like an Fallout game. apparently had a lot of fan or unofficial releases for RPGs, but it wasn't until yeah. Modiphius in 2020 or 2018 yep. or whatever. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of those. Um, mm-hmm. so uh, I wanted to make that comment, but no, Monster of the Week, I think it's great. I think it's uh, it'll be a fun narrative game, and then Mondays we'll we'll have a game. I just need to, yeah, A State, I think. A State, um, are you are you convinced that's the way to go right now? Shot. Well, uh, we promised we would do it, um, and I have a really short one shot. It's just the uh, forged in the dark system still sort of confuses me, so um, it hurts my brain a little, which makes me intimidated to run it. Which is funny because I'm not very intimidated to run things most of the time. Yeah, but well, like anything, I'll just uh, run it and ignore the shit parts that I don't like. Probably so, you know. Well, if anybody's if anybody's out there that has any forged in the dark tips or tricks, don't hesitate to throw them in chat or comments later because obviously we need them. <laughs> I don't think and any of us have much forged in the, uh, uh, like uh, a fortune no, in the dark or a blades in the dark game. I've never even played it. I've never played in a blades in the dark game or anything even. Yeah. We have to fix it. I mean, I have it on my shelf in the back there, but. Well, yeah, so do I. Uh, I mean, Bla- I've read blades in the dark, but, um, and, but like I said, there's certain parts of the game that are, I don't know, just intimidating to me. So, yeah. But the A State game, they said they can, the A State one shot that they have, mm-hmm. um, they said it could be run in like an hour if you want. So I think it'll oh, really? Be for, yeah. I think it'd be perfect for uh, a one shot on the stream. I'm curious as to it, with how much uh, we typically dally. I'm sure a one shot could, we could, we could draw that out. Well, the thing is, is like the, the Forge of the Dark games, like, there's specific like sections like there's the the, like there's specific sections where you can do that so once you get into the actual like doing things like there's not much dallying because you've already planned it out pretty much Mm. and like you're like this is what we're doing yeah um there's a little bit of dallying at the beginning but it kind of tries to like uh like quantify that so Hmm. well and that's the parts that i struggle with it feels very broken up and choppy to me kind of like um i don't know if you ever looked at the burning wheel system 
it's an older narrative yeah. system and uh it's like you decide what the scene what's going to happen in the scene and do all your dice rolls at the front and then you role play through the scene once you've made all of your decisions and all your results and then you role play through the scene um which always seemed kind of weird to me oh weird so like if you, you you'd kind of know going into it how like you yeah you knew everything about yeah you know everything about how it happened oh. and then okay. you role play it out it's weird i you know i've heard of i've heard of the burning wheel because i think that it, it creates quite interesting characters based on what somebody else had mentioned to me i just it's, have never read it or it's pretty crunchy uh, as far as i remember like i said it has a whole section of mm -hmm. this is the rules part and this is the role playing part Jeez. so yeah but i think if, I, mean, if year... I remember right it's been a while since i've read it so if i'm wrong somebody please feel free to correct me <laughs> you're wrong brent um although i have to say that you know i this year we're doing more sci-fi and i'm kind of appreciative because did you guys uh start watching the three body problem with uh i've seen the first episode i enjoyed the first episode i have not yeah. had a chance to watch it was a busy weekend so no spoiler version of the three body problem but i've been enjoying the heck out of it I mean, we've gotten four episodes in and i never actually had a chance to read the book i think the book came out and then i just try, i tried to read it at one point like but it was just too dense. Like I just, my brain was just like, I need something simpler. And I think I opened up a comic book afterwards. Um, I needed pictures. <laughs> so sometimes you do. Sometimes you need pictures. Definitely. Sometimes you do. But I've been enjoying it. And it was funny because I got, I forced my wife to watch it and, um, and she enjoyed it. So, you know, I mean, the first episode is pretty bleak, but, uh, but once you get past that, it's pretty darn good. Science is broken. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot, but it kind of it kind of gives you the, the inspiration to play other sci-fi games, and I th so I think A State is really good. We got the Aliens game that we got under our belt. We're gonna get Devourer of, of Worlds in, um, I think at some point in the near future. And then Dune, man, that's a lot of sci-fi. It is a lot of sci-fi. That's a decent amount. Did we have any other sci-fi games that were tickling? Coriolis, Coriolis is out there. Death in Space is out there. Those are games I plan on running at some point. Gotcha, gotcha. Both versions of Coriolis. Oh, so are we going to do the third age and then move to the Great Dark? Or uh, I think my I don't know yet. Uh, we'll probably do the Great Dark since their quick starters out, hmm. um, and they're still they're still in their Kickstarter's still in progress. It'd probably be good to like kind of review that in case anybody is, thinks was wondering if they should fund it or not. Sure. Now, but I n none of us have played Coriolis at this point, right? Mm -mm. Um, I'm not. No, nope. I have been surprised, and I don't know maybe if it was just because of the type of content that we do and all that stuff, but I've seen a lot more solo RPG channels on my feed. Is it does does YouTube know I'm a lonely person? That one, <laughs> or is it just? Um, well, I just think own? there's. I, I just think it's a it's a growing. Um, I think it's growing. I think it's a growing. I think it's a growing part of. Uh, the TTRPG community, just because, like you said, it once you get older, it's hard to get people together. Mm. Um, and if people still want to do the hobby and they don't want to play a video game, like yeah. it's kind of a creative way to flex your brain muscles. So yeah, I was just surprised because I had seen lots, uh, like a surprising number suddenly of like actual plays of people doing their solo actual plays and all that stuff. <sighs> um, and I just was curious if you guys had noticed the same thing while you were doing that. I've seen a few. I've had a few popping up, uh, both tabletop RPGs and uh, board games, solo board games. Oh. Um, well, I, you know, it's 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 all gaming. It's mm -hmm. just not all the same gaming. Yeah, I still I get a lot of actual plays. So and forty k stuff. So forty k stuff. They're, yeah. they're still trying to get you with their money. Forty k well, is that just the price for the basic set? Yes. Uh, no, I watch a lot of battle reports for 40k still, so they still come up a lot. But um, yeah. but yeah, I get a lot of real plays too, which because I watch them a lot. Who do you remember? And that? bare knuckle boxing. It, it was <laughs> bare knuckle boxing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bare knuckle boxing. That's that's like the three things that are usually on my feed. So have you guys played? Uh, I have not played a solo RPG. Um, no. I had I had played a little bit of Call of Cthulhu solo. Um, there, like the weird, the interesting part to me is that like, and it might just be that there's a lot more resources for it right now. 
but it seems like a lot more people have put out either RPGs that are capable or designed around doing a solo thing. Sure. Um, like Iron Sworn, I think, was the main one that I heard about that was kind of like the big splash on the scene for it. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot more tools and tips that people have put out to basically be able to help guide you through soul playing. I think the mythic, is that what it is? There's like the mythic guide that kind of has the recently re second edition released on how to go through and do like the Oracle system or the various. Yeah. Like how to make any game, mm -hmm. a, how to make any game a soul. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then there are a lot more things that people have put out that are like, if, even though the game may not have been devised to be solo, the publishers have put out games or people of third parties have put out stuff to make the game more solo. Um, like I think I saw something for like Basin or Free League that allowed for solo play. They basically explain how you could use their mysteries and create solo stuff. They're usually um, they're including a lot of solo play stuff in their like Kickstarters and stuff now. Mm -hmm. Like Electric State has a will have solo play included. I think Cohorts has solo included, which is Modifius and Free, Free League. But I think both of those are going to have solo elements mm -hmm. um, because I think it is a growing. It's definitely an expanding piece of it i think yeah yeah i i i think it's cool i that uh you know companies are putting that kind of stuff out i just haven't played it i wonder if anybody we got a few people watching it looks like uh if you've played any solo role-playing games uh, and choose to want to share your experience let us know yeah i'd be curious i mean i, I like i said my one experience with it with um with uh call of Cthulhu, i it, it didn't like immediately pull me in obviously where i play like okay. once a week or anything like that but, yeah the only game i've been interested in maybe trying solo is um electric state i am kind of curious to see what that might be like um it's the only game that's kind of sparked that interest in me okay so. well i played i played a ton of other things solo and when i was younger i played i played even a lot of board games solo um like that were not designed to be played solo. Right. Um, yeah, usually solo though was me playing, you know, multiple people at the same time, mm -hmm. um, which is not the same experience I realize. Uh, but so yeah. solo games aren't foreign to me or wanting to play solo or not, not mm -hmm. having someone else to play with, you know? Um, yeah. That happens. So I, 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 I I, I like the option. I like that the option exists. Yeah, and I think it might be neat. I think there might be some neat stuff. If it's a game that especially, like, again, it's one of those things that just trying a random solo game, I don't think. I think you have to have something that kind of okay. speaks to you. Um, sure. To get makes started, sense. Yeah. I think. Because, I, I mean, I, I would be curious how many of those games, you know, how many of the adventures are kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure type deal where it's just like, oh, you, you've made this election, go to page 72. You've paid uh, this selection. Have to be that way, right? You know. Well, I think I it's more of an I think it's more of an algorithm uh, based on die, dice rolling. I think. Okay. Yeah. That would that would also make sense. Because I because I remember I thought I saw a Pathfinder solo game that had kind of really like that kind of experience. Okay. Well, yeah, um, we played that little Pathfinder solo game, that short one. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It was it was like the intro. Like this is how you, you could both play it, and we both played it, and we both. Uh, I don't think we did well. I, I think... was not. I was not super happy with the experience. <laughs> you were. Like, you did were I like... die? I think I did die. I think I did die. You probably went up like... against the the pirate or whatever it was, and you were like, "It was the oh, golem." Like... Yeah, it was the golem the that had six attacks a turn or whatever. Yeah. And you were like, "I'm going to get you." Um, I just fled, so I obviously had the the average adventure experience. Lots of treasure left on the table. So, I think so I tried like, to flee, but he caught me, if I remember right. Oh, jeez. <laughs> You're like, because there was a way out, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I, yeah, we did play that Pathfinder solo, but it didn't, again, that didn't hook me either. So no, I wasn't super, I wasn't super uh, impressed by that. But yeah, but I think, but, I don't know. I've heard this. There's a lot of rules to Pathfinder 2 that I think may make that a little bit more frustrating think so oh uh, yeah well we actually had a commenter who um said uh on one of the one of ours that was talking about playing solo games and how like he'd never try to play pathfinder or fifth edition solo because there's too many rules mm -hmm. um there are a lot of rules yeah yeah i'd be curious as to what like people recommend these days is to be the most 
you know, the, I guess the the most approachable solo tabletop game because people people really seem to whenever whenever I see at least a I'd like to play a game solo. What can I do solo? Iron Sworn seems to be just thrown in there. Well, I think that's the one because that was a that was uh, made for solo play. Like, uh, I feel like Iron Sworn was like, this is a solo game. I mean, you can play it with other people if you want, but isn't there a sci-fi really, version of it? That's really, why they designed it? Uh, yes, there is Star Forged. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. So if, if we want to try it, we could. We could do it and have a battle report on stream if you want. <laughs> Here's how I failed horribly at uh, me. <laughs> oh, I I would thought you were looking at an article, some, some blog. No, that, that would be what we would title or what I would title my part of the episode. Your part yes. of the <laughs> yeah, This Star is how Jeff failed horribly at the yeah, solo it's, RPG. Yeah, Star Sworn. That's the, yeah. Mm. Is it so? It's Iron Sworn and Star Sworn. Is that what the? Yeah, that makes yep. sense. It's on brand, right? That's fair. That's fair. So, I believe so. I believe that is the that is the naming convention that they have chosen for themselves. Oh man. So, well, needless to say, I don't think we'll be playing any solo games soon. But we could always you know, we could always put them in. Yeah, I'm always curious because, like, I don't know. It's been, uh, like. Role playing is such a social thing for me. Mm -hmm. um, it always it's it's inter like solo games are interesting to me because it is a social experience for me to play a role playing game, um, and that's why I was thinking if if I do get uh, when I do get a state and if it is I do want to do the solo thing I might even just do it on like do have a night where I stream uh, solo playing uh, electric state if people are interested because that would make it a little bit more. Sure, that would interest me and in me playing more than, uh, um, than, you know, just solo. No, yeah. that that would be interesting. And uh, yeah, yeah, Hopefully. we'd have to see. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, you'd play the game you want to play, and if it happens to be solo, that's great. Um, well, I'm saying if viewers are interested, they yeah. should chime in. They could let us know comments or chat. Happen to be Indeed. in the chat. Um, but yeah. Anything else out there right now? I mean, so this week, so this week we got Monster of the Week. Next week, are we doing another stream on Monday with a game involved? Um, a state, you think? If I can wrap my head around A state in the week, yeah. Okay, so and returning to work doesn't kill me. Vacations, <sighs> the death of a strong mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like I, I always feel like whenever I go on like a longer vacation than just a couple days, like. I go back and I'm just jelly when I get back to the job. I'm just like, oh, you need me to do what? Read a I just know there's, I, I, I just, yeah, I just know there's 500 emails waiting for me. The good news is, is 490 of them don't matter. That's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If only you could, if only you could just select those 490, just automatically. Delete. Yeah. I mean, I mean, technically you could. There's always that gamble you could play. Uh, shift delete um, and see what happens. <laughs> just basically you come back and you're like, well, I cleared out my inbox. And they were like, well, did you get back to me? Uh, could you resend it? If it's that important, you'll resend it. <laughs> if that's important, you should you should touch base with me. <laughs> you've yeah. never had you've never had somebody that did the uh yeah, no, I came back in my email inbox. Uh it broke when I was gone. I don't I don't know what it is. I got a ticket open with IT, but they say that's unlikely I'll get back my email. So if you emailed me, please. Uh, we have had that happen, but it was probably the truth with some of the stuff that happens. Uh, well, it, it could it could be the truth, but you will find out what is actually useful and not, you know. Oh yeah, there's a ton. Yeah, there's because there's of a ton of stuff that you just won't get, or that was mildly annoying to someone in the moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah no we'll and see. like that's the hardest part about being like in a work environment especially a corporate environment because you would find at least i don't know about you guys but you know at least in my place i would just have i would literally have emails coming in faster than i could delete some days because yes. and i was just and it just just because i have a, an idea about keeping my inbox clean so i can keep the emails that i need but i'm just yeah like, that's oh, that's God. yeah that's me too the I two am. seconds that you made me read the subject line and I was not important enough to care. Like, pfft, just yeah, gone. all of the, uh, yeah, I make sure to stay on top of my emails too, which apparently other people don't sometimes, which is always kind of surprising. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. you can't. Honestly, being motivated by what's important to other people is how you never get anything done. 
True. So. Yeah. Go, go, go Unfortun- I, unfortunately, because it because I used to be that way. I used to be that I have to drop everything. I'm on a, I'm on a project with a deadline in the next five minutes and a freaking email comes in and I'm like, oh, I have to check that email. It might be important. And then I have Did to waste ever... time crafting a response for it. Nope, not anymore. Yeah. Did you ever hear the Eisenhower matrix for that stuff out of curiosity? I think I've heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's that it it's that four grid that says, you know, like, you know, what's what it's, you know, that's that phrase. Well, it's the, like the, the problem to me is never important. What's right. Important no, the, 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 the urgent and, you know, the ur- what is it? It's urgent and impactful. Most yeah. emails fall in the non urgent, non impactful quadrant. Yeah. They just aren't worth even opening up and reading and is what my experience is when I try to do something like that. Although, so when I start I judging do, them, I get harsh. Although I do have to say, anybody that uses the send receipts on their email, straight to jail. I hate that shit. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, would you like to send a receipt that you got this email and you opened it? No. Let them let them wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, I hate those. I hate them so much because they would just pop up and I'd immediately be like angry at whatever the email was. <laughs> Even if it was just something like, hey, we need to make sure everybody's on board with planning this party. I'd be like, not this guy. I hate you. <laughs> just for that stupid yeah, thing. Yeah, no, the send receipts are stupid. They're they're right. not as bad as reply, reply all, but uh, they're close. Yeah, they're pretty bad. <laughs> Oh man, uh, reply all that's like happy birthday, and everybody's like, reply all happy birthday, and they just it drives that's, me insane. That's pretty awful. Well, I, you know, you guys have probably had those those uh organization wide emails that people you know that that exist oh, out there. Like, if you wanted to email everybody in the organization, you're all on this one list. Do you guys have those or no? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. We you would have had to build your own. I, I think uh, the companies that I worked for mostly had taken those out. Well, so we had. I don't think they had like an everybody in in uh, in the place that I had worked. But what they did have is they had one for our entire vertical, which was about ten thousand okay. people. And so one of oh, one just of ten thousand. Uh, that's it. Right. One, of, one of our people was just like, "Hey, I have a question on this this, this issue," and so she just said. And I was, and I got the email, and I was like, "Uh oh, oh no, oh no!" <laughs> and I was like, "Uh, well, I mean, the the good news is, is you got an answer. You will you get emailed, an answer. You, you literally emailed anybody and everybody that could possibly answer you. The bad news is, is now everybody knows that you used the wrong distribution. <laughs> yeah, now everybody knows, and you're gonna get a lot of answers. Yeah, some that you don't want." And then you're going to get a lot of those obligatory, like, can somebody take me off this thread? <laughs> yeah, we're going to search 10,000 names and take you out. Sure. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The surprising uh, part is the people who aren't aware of how to do that kind of stuff uh, sometimes are way higher up than you would think they should be. Yeah. For not That's knowing true. a basic, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. It's just, it, it is what it is. So, um, so yeah. So I think that's, I mean, I don't, pretty easy week this week yeah i think we're at capacity yeah we are so anybody from comments or anything like that have any questions stuff i didn't see any i didn't see any comments tonight brent did you see any nope no one's poked in yet okay that's okay that's fine yep we'll catch yeah. you next time we were trying something weird this week because we didn't have a we didn't have a game ready to play so and we will probably do these in the future if anybody wants to chime in yeah, yeah, just say, say hello, hang out. Come talk to us, and if people uh, introduce uh, a topic, you know, go, hey, I was wondering about this. Yeah, you know, and if more people do it, we'll do this more often. So yeah, yeah. we have a surprising number of opinions. For all of them that we share, there's even more <laughs> looking at the surface. Yeah, we're I guess, we're, I guess that's true. We're very unassuming, <laughs> unassuming, opinionated bastards. And if you ask something that I don't have an opinion on yet, I will as soon as you mention it. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll figure something out. Yeah, we'll work on it. I will build an opinion and, and hey, have an opinion hey, in hey, that Brent, ten may, seconds. Brent, maybe we can workshop it. You wanna you wanna start a you wanna start an email distribution list for us so we can workshop <laughs> that idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> our email distribution list is easy. It's three people. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, 
we don't have a newsletter. We just have us three. Uh, Unless you want me to start picking random people, just making up email addresses, include them on our distro list. I could do that. It would be great if we could get one of them to respond. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of against that because I, I get enough of those random texts. Like I, for some reason this week, that was the, I'm at the airport. Why aren't you getting me scams? Like, <laughs> did, did you guys get those random texts that are just like, Oh yeah, I got, I got two this week from different numbers that both said, hi, Lena. And I'm just oh, like, report I get and delete. the high ones. That's, report and delete. I get the report high ones delete. a lot. Gosh. Uh, or not a lot. Once in a while, I'll get the high ones. So, uh, or, or, uh, we have your package and we couldn't deliver it. I get those ones too, once in a while. Well, what's funny is I think that this would go with one of those unknown army games is like all the scam emails or whatever it is. There's got to be some way you could twist that into an unknown. Oh, man, there's so much. There has like, to be. There's so much like news and, and everything that's like rife for unknown armies games right now. Like it's ridiculous with how crazy the world is. Yeah. Well, ex you know, like the extended warranty calls, mm -hmm. emails, you could, that could totally be an unknown armies thing as well. Yep. Somebody's maneuvering for God Walker of the salesman. <laughs> Every time somebody says yes, we're in. Every time. <laughs> Every time. Jeez. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it's all good. So, but yeah, so I guess uh, it seemed like it was a new season for anime. So I'm going to see what aired. Maybe I'll catch an episode or two before I had to. Go to anime bed. it up. Yeah, yeah, it's a new season, which is kind of interesting to see what's coming out, but I'll probably be. I don't know. Maybe I'll be happy. Maybe I'll be disappointed. We'll have to see. Uh, right. You love anime. You'll be happy. Yeah, I'll be happy. There's something. I'll be able to find at least one thing this season. Like I, sure. I was surprised. Honestly, um, Netflix and Pluto. That was like one of my favorite animes last year. So good. So good. Edge Runners. Everybody should watch Edge Runners. Isn't it like two years ago now? Ah, it's as close as I get to anime. So, you know. Jeez. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Well, huh. I'll take a look. I'll see what Crunchyroll has to offer me. And Roadhouse, you can, everybody can go watch Roadhouse for its uh, unlimited amount of hilarity. Uh, I'll probably skip that one. Man, it, it, it's ripe for riff tracks. There should definitely be riff tracks on the new on the new. Uh, oh, I'm on sure the they will. Roadhouse. Oh fuck! It's oh man, it is an amazing disaster. That's all I have to say about the movie. Yeah. All right. Well, then, uh, if since we don't have any comments in chat and all that stuff, uh, do you want to let people know how they can if they if they think of something they want to mention later? What can they say? Yeah, you can find us on social media. We are at Rollwise. We are on Facebook, Threads, Twitter, and YouTube. Or you can email us. It's RollwiseGuys at gmail .com. And everybody that views this, thank you for uh, following us along as we ramble tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, please let us know if you have any comments, questions, or just topics you'd like us to cover on these types of episodes, and we will make sure to get back to you. Uh, and as always, roll well, roll wise, and be safe out there, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.